turning on the recorder and I keep smiling, so I'm just going to go for it. Uh, this first video, hopefully, is going to be about um, my experiences with foods. What works, what doesn't, what sort of problems come with certain popular diets, etc. And what I think is the best course of action for anyone who wants to do, a, say, weight loss or muscle gain or whatever. I do realize I'm not the fittest person, but I do think my data is conclusive. I'm actually right in the middle of partway going through. I'm, I'm in a transition between vegan diet and ketogenic diet. I haven't done keto yet. I'm going to do that this summer. But just considering everything that I know already about that, and also I jumped a little bit ahead of schedule last Christmas, and I did a little bit of that. And so far, it, what my assumptions seemed correct, although there might be a little bit of bias there. So I'm going to recount the stories and come up with the information and why I believe what I believe when it comes to certain foods. So the first thing I did was freshman year, lost a bunch of weight, right? Turns out the best way to do that is just to not eat. So that goes into fasting, right? And I, I experimented with fasting later. I'll get into that. But the thing is, if you want to lose weight, stop eating. The first two days are kind of bad. The first third day of just not eating is really bad. But after that, after that, it's really easy. I tried doing that a couple of times. Although, I do have to say, make sure the last meal you eat is really, it is not like sugar and caffeine. Because otherwise, you're going to hit a drop really hard. And you might even pass out just because of low sugar or, say, uh, high caffeine. Which is also why I recommend, if you're going on fasting, to not drink coffee. Because you will have some serious side effects when it comes to jitters. That being said, I did that with the fasting. But something else I should point out is... Whenever I go on a diet and I lose weight, I gain height. So if you want to gain height, maybe, maybe. That being said, that's that's the first thing I went to. And that, that would be the fasting. And after that, I went into vegetarian. So with vegetarian, I did cheese, eggs, no meat, stuff like that. But the thing about that diet is you... It's actually really easy to gain weight, so that didn't go quite as planned. Then I went into vegan, and with vegan, you cut out eggs, you cut out cheese. It's just fruits, vegetables, nuts, stuff like that. So what, what I ended up doing was some very unhealthy practices, like just frying up some cabbage every day after school. And that's what I would eat. I do not recommend that because I started getting some serious malnutrition effects like severe headaches and muscle spasms although muscle spasms got worse on a different form of the vegan diet but i'll get into that later the, th the thing about eating only cabbage is not only to get malnourished but you also get really what's the best way to describe it you stink you stink a lot, really bad, so I wouldn't recommend it. So after the cabbage, the cabbage patch, I moved on to the more standard vegan diet. Basically, everything, fruits and vegetables. I did rice and beans for quite a while, actually. But the thing about rice and beans is that you'll get the calories, but you won't feel full. You'll always need a little bit more. And that sucks. And also, you can't... <laughs> did potatoes too. You can't live off of only potatoes and you can't live off of only rice and beans. You have to have some sort of variety. See, with vegan diets, even if you have variety, you still need some things that you don't normally get from plants like B12. 
Although, I, I don't think I ever had any experience with malnutrition of B12. I always found the systems were um, congruent with stuff like iron deficiencies and calcium deficiencies, but also as a disclaimer, I know next to nothing about any of these things. This is all just what I've come up with through the data that I've collected over the years and also just thinking about it, which I do think about it a lot. So after the cabbage patch and the potato patch and the beans and rice patch, you get on to the peanut, the peanut patch. You see, peanut butter is one of the marvels of modern day society. I mean, put peanut butter in front of any animal in existence and it will go freaking nuts. Put peanut butter in front of a vegan and they'll go freaking nuts. Okay. So peanut butter is really, really good, right? I <laughs> mean, last one though, last one. The thing about peanut butter is you will also get malnourished and you'll also start to see that's that goes for just about everything if, if you eat enough of a certain type of plant you'll start to stink like that plant and it you'll stink in different ways like you'll stink differently if you eat only cabbage versus if you eat only peanuts because if you eat only cabbage what mainly stinks is your refuse but if you eat only peanuts then you'll get oils like here You'll get oils on your face, and the oil will smell like peanuts. It's weird. So, past that, I wouldn't recommend any vegan diets. Um, high fat vegan diets, I would recommend that above any other vegan diet, just because it's easy to sustain yourself if you're very busy. So, if you're going for college, for example, you just pop a package of peanuts down and it's a thousand calories, half your daily calorie intake right there. It's quick, easy, all that stuff. But if you're going, say, cold food, vegan, like only carrots and celery and stuff like that, I wouldn't recommend that if you're trying to get stuff done. If you're very comfortable in your current living situation, then that's fine. But it's not for people who are extremely busy. So I've covered vegetarian diets, which are okay, but it's really easy to gain weight. I've talked about vegan diets, which are okay, but you get malnourished. And you have to eat a lot. Like I talked about with the cold vegan, you have to eat so much food, so much food, which is why I recommend the peanut diet, high fat vegan diets. And I've also talked about vegetarian diets, vegan diets, blah, 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 fasting. The thing about fasting is you can, there are two types of ways you can fast successfully, which, which are ways, they're, they're not painful fasting, right? It's, it's not like you eat only a thousand calories of only carbohydrates every day. That's the most painful kind of fasting. The best kinds of fasting are you eat once a day, where you have like say a two hour window where you eat and then you just don't eat for the rest of the day and you do, I did that for about six months and I liked it, I liked that. Basically what I did was I eat right after I came home from school and I came back and then I, I eat right after I came home from school, played video games all day, went to sleep, went to school, came back from school, ate, <laughs> played video games all day. That was my senior year of high school really. Um, Which, senior year of high school, I was also in the boys' conditioning class, and I was on a vegan diet. And I'd say if you're on a vegan diet, you have to go high fat if you're also working out. But I wouldn't recommend it in the first place. Really, if you want to gain muscle, go for the ketogenic diet. Although, that comes without an overwhelming amount of evidence. Because the evidence I do have is only worth of one month, which was last Christmas. But anywho, fasting, 24-hour fasting, that's fine. And also prolonged fasting. So say you're fasting for a week or you're fasting for two weeks or three weeks, that's fine too. But if you're fasting for only a couple days and then you binge and you fast for a couple days and then you binge, that's, that's how you fuck up your...
your hormonal system because your body will think you're going into starvation, but it won't. It also depends on what you eat after you fast. Because if you eat only carbohydrates, man, you're fucked. But if you eat meat, say, then your body might get into the habit and you might be fine. But if you eat, if you don't eat for extended periods of time, your body will adapt. You'll be fine. You'll lose weight. If you don't eat for, say, only less than 24 hours, but more than 20 hours, then you'll also be fine. And there's been a lot of people who do that diet extend. Well, I don't know if they call it extended fasting. They just daily fasting, I suppose. That's successful, and I would recommend that. If if you're a busy person, I would highly recommend it because this way you don't have to constantly go out and eat like fast food or whatever from whatever place. McDonald's, say, because that stuff's really bad for you. But also, you get, yeah. You get to eat your own food. And after you do it for a while, you stop being hungry. I know it sounds crazy. It might sound crazy to someone who's eaten three meals a day for their entire life. But if you only eat one meal a day, after about two to three weeks, you you stop getting hungry all the time, really. So yeah, I'd say that sums it up. I'd say that sums up some of the major conclusions that I've drawn. It's really hard to lay out all of the conclusions in a video like this without any preparation. So I might do some notes on it later. And if I do, I'll post it on this site. But I thought you guys would want to know what someone who's been studying this personally for five years has learned. And that's what I've learned, which is vegan diets are great if you're going high fat. If you're not going high fat, then you're going to have a lot of problems with malnutrition and with consumption because you're going to be constantly full. You're never going to have enough. Um, with vegetarian diets, which it's really easy to gain weight because you're not eating as much protein as you could be, and you're eating a lot of fat to get the protein that you need. So the fat to protein ratio makes you eat a lot of calories, and that will make you fat pretty quickly. Um, full carbohydrate vegan or vegetarian, I wouldn't recommend at all because carbohydrates, they're fine. They just make you hungry, and that sucks. And lastly, I, I hesitate to say this because I don't have conclusive evidence. I don't have like six months on a ketogenic diet where I recorded all of my times of uh, all of my appetites, all of my uh, amounts of energies that I've had, all that stuff. I haven't that, had that recorded. I only have one month. But considering that one month and considering the different correlations that I draw between fats, protein, carbohydrates, and cellulose, which those are the main things if you want to try getting data yourself. Those are the four main things you need to be looking out for. From the correlations, I'd say that ketogenic diet would be successful in some of the claims that people online claim for it to have, which is uh, lowering appetite and giving you increased energy. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should say. I suppose the last thing I should say to anyone is that watch out for what you're eating. <laughs> watch out for what you're, you are eating because you could be eating some shit. That's really shit. That's really bad but you'd think it would be good for you. I'd say get a control group, a control week, say, and then do a test week and see that one determining factor of what that one thing does. See if there are any correlations. Do it for yourself. And I hope you guys learned something from this. Now, how do I turn this thing off?